Sir, I'm Wayne Dennison. Uh, we haven't met. But I apologize, yes, sir. I'm about to do you. <laughs> I like I'm to tell you my name before I fuck you. Let's start with what you finished with. You understand that the court oh, by you first. First. by Miss Hurd's counsel to order a medical exam of Mr. Depp, and those motions were denied. I think the the your team <laughs> told the court you didn't want to have them, and the court. Agreed with you. I don't think the court proactively did it. You kind of had a motion to them, right? N no. No. <laughs> Ms. Hurd's lawyers moved for them and asked for them and did not get them. Isn't that right, sir? If if you're saying that's what happened, my understanding of was that you, you all did not want Oh, you know better, buddy. Go on. They petitioned for it. The court said no. Yes. That's what my understanding of it was. The court said no to ordering Mr. Depp to do the medical exam. Right, that's, I said the court did not require it, right. And there was one that was ordered, in fact, right? There was. All right. <laughs> wow. Yep. We're off to a great start here. This is going to be a fantastic, <laughs> fantastic follow-up question to this is, did you review Miss Hurd's, uh, were you asked to review Miss Hurd's diagnoses or, or any of it? Just All right. So, do your impression of a deer in the headlights thing you again. Talked about, uh, oh, rats. Was he, the Goldwater rule? Yes, sir. Been around for almost fifty years, right? Uh, yeah, I'm fifty nine. That sounds about right. Yeah, and it's been around as a result of a presidential election that you referenced. Yes. And who has that rule? What organization uh, maintains that rule? The American Psychiatric Association. An association you're a member of? Associated by a member of, yes. Aren't you a fellow or something? Yes, I am. Okay. So, <laughs> and this is an ethical rule, right? It is an ethical rule. And yes, it's ethical. They say rules. It's an ethical guideline. Yes, they're guidelines. Mm -hmm. You can bend them. More of a guideline. We know that over time, the American Psychiatric Association has amended the rule so it's not just about diagnoses, but it's also about professional opinions. Could you be more specific, say, about professional Ooh, opinion? The man who's trying to figure out where he's ultimately going me, with the question. Let me read this and see if you're familiar with it. Oh, this is good. It is unethical for a psychiatrist to offer a professional opinion about an individual based on publicly available information without conducting an examination. That's the rule, right? Ooh. If you're reading it directly, I will believe you. Okay. You don't know? Aren't you the expert? Aren't you a However, fellow from that diagnosis is not required for an opinion to be professional. So my question is, it's not just diagnosis that this Goldwater rule applies to. It's professional opinions. So, again, I, I will reiterate Ooh. that that would come down to essentially nullifying witness testimony Expert witness testimony. No, it wouldn't. Out. No, no. After, ex the patient. Patient. exactly. Well, if you know it didn't happen, but regardless of that, the whole expert witness testimony thing would be basically. Sir, are you an expert null, on witness testimony? Null null exactly. Exactly. Fact, exactly. Contemplates that issue, doesn't oh, it, sir? Oh shit! The, again, I'm just telling you the answer to the question when you're reading me those statements. How do you know the answer? The if you don't know the, the response he by the even other the side, who is publishes also is that if that was the case, there could be no expert witness testimony in the courtroom. Incorrect. Psychiatrists are ethically prohibited from evaluating individuals without, permit, without permission or other authorization such as a court order. That's the rule, right? Again, if you're reading that, then I have to believe you're not misrepresenting it. And I would come back to you again. How did he know he's and in the rules of his profession if he doesn't know what the rules are? You might as well get rid of all the expert witnesses we've had throughout all of time for court proceedings. Because what you're saying is unless a court orders it, and that's what you just said. Great. Let this guy said, do this all day. Then, therefore, expert witnesses cannot do an evaluation this is, based on an no, observation you, of the medical correct. records. Correct. You Insurance can't. Insurance companies cannot do evaluations solely based on the medical records where their doctors rendering professional opinions. So at the end of the day, from we're essentially saying a professional opinion. If you actually talk to the person, 
this whole medical system we have, this whole legal system we have is null and void. Uh, no, nope. no, yes, you are, sir. I, no, you are. Give me a give me a second, and I'll, okay. I'll give you more than a second. Wow, what a what, what I'm saying and what I am reading to you is a rule <laughs> by your organization that takes into account that there could be court orders that would permit the the exact kind of evaluation that you say I'm eliminating. And I think we're going in circles because I think I just said that means expert witness testimony would not be allowed. And the He's branch of forensic psychiatry expert witness would be testimony is about hindered. generalities. We know the branch of forensic psychiatry does not prohibit that. So I am a member of the APA. That doesn't necessarily mean every single thing they put in there, everybody has to uncategorically agree with. Because clearly, that's I don't not have to follow my professional guidelines. That, uh, I don't agree with a lot of the Utah the State Bar rules, rules, but I still have to follow them. Inconsistent with the Goldwater rule. Yeah. My first is inconsistent. If we're saying that I, if the Goldwater rule says, and I very much said that during deposition, that the Goldwater rule was made for presidents and public figures such as oh, that. Really? It's policy. only for presidents? It was made for. Public it's not figures. made for. Hollywood, but I'll even take that, Mr. Depp's a public. Really? What I'm saying to you is that the Goldwater rule is saying we cannot do any expert witness testimony in our field. That is exactly what the Goldwater rule is Your saying. Honor, I'd ask you to disqualify him exactly as a witness. What you read. And I'm just telling you what you are Move saying that him. rule encompasses. What I'm asking you, sir, I'd move is to strike did him. you comply with the ethical requirements of the APA when refer when rendering the professional opinions that you've rendered today. It is a it is a requirement of the APA. It is not the requirement of the APA. What does that mean? So again, the answer is no secondarily, secondarily, secondarily. Again, in order to not you we run our order the witness because the there's an expert witness before me. There's an expert witness is everyone brought in. So all I'm saying to you, that means the whole field of medical legal law is corrupt and unethical for engaging. Move to strike him. It clearly oh says God. we should not do. So if you're saying that, then the answer is yes, I'm agreeing with that statement. Oh, holy shit. <laughs> I agree that the APA would deem your testimony and your professional been you. you're unethical. I, again... I am saying you are saying that the whole I'm an expert witness. I am saying as an expert Are you now? <laughs> and solely as an expert witness. The, that guideline is Ooh, permitting that from occurring. I would say then that the whole what am I watching here? testimony again would be disavowed by what you are quoting in the gold order. And we know that's not the case because if it was, we would not be allowed to do it. And you said the rule was for presidents, right? And that was initially figures, for presidents, yes. But, and the name of the rule came from that. But the rule says it is unethical for a psychiatrist to offer a professional opinion about an individual. That's right, sir. It's not just presidents, it's not public figures, it's individuals. Funny, it was named after the. According to your logic, if you don't put something in the title, it's not true. Oh my God, this guy's this morning, I believe, about my moron. intimate partner violence. So, what I would say to you then, sir, is that if you say this about an individual, again, any court would have to render an expert witness testimony invalid. Any doctor that reviews charts would have to render it invalid. I can go on the list of docs that do not see or interview patients directly, and that's a violation. So basically, you are saying that unless you do a direct clinical evaluation, then all of the field of forensic psychiatry and all of uh, managed care is doing an unethical violation. Unless the court orders it. Seeing the presence. We deny <laughs> patients medications all the time without seeing them. We deny patients treatments, unfortunately, without seeing them. And I'm on the receiving end of that. So the answer Wait, to your question, what? again... Unless you were saying to me that all of this is unethical, which is what you are saying. This is what you are. This is how I'm interpreting what you are saying to me. That unless you do. You don't have to interpret anything. You just read the rule. 
Therefore, it could not be considered ethical. And I'm telling you how that applicable to not just expert law, but also managed care, it applicable to multiple brands of medicine, hospital duration of hospitalization, stay, they get a value. So tell me, tell me where you want me to end this. What are you doing fine? Why don't we talk? Why don't we wow. talk about what you just testified to? Because I didn't ask you anything about that. I asked you whether <laughs> you just <laughs> this just principle of medical ethics. She's laughing. You liked it unethically. Yes I or no? Act, no. Internally. As an expert witness, I have not acted unethically. And if you want the jury to believe that expert witnesses are unethical, then I guess that's for them well, to decide. That's, yes, that's or for no, them sir. to you decide. Said no. Well, let's go to the next question. Okay. Right. Oh, oh my God. God. Psychiatric diagnosis occurs in the context of an evaluation based on thorough history taking, examination. Just read the, Just read the and where <laughs> applicable collated or collateral information. You'll agree with that. I believe I said that earlier. Yes. Yeah. And it's a departure from the method from the methods of the profession to render an opinion without an examination and without conducting an evaluation in accordance with the standards of psychiatric practice, correct? Well, again, it, by the way, for the record, we're intimate partner violence is not a psychiatric diagnosis. I'll start with that. Substance usage by themselves is not a psychiatric diagnosis. If you want to cut- What, what is your opinion I based on that? Because psychiatrist you said your area of expertise, right? Personality traits is not a you diagnosis. You said substance use disorder. Ergo, I am basically commenting on She's the things that ergo. are to me. He's talking about a non-expert diagnosis. But, it, but an evaluation, if I was going to treat a patient or anyone here, those are the steps I would take. We, I think, started with the notion that this rule applies broader than diagnoses. It <laughs> applies to professional opinions. I believe you've you rendered prof professional opinions relative, relative to narcissistic personality traits, haven't you, sir? Relative to Mr. Depp. Again. I believe you just commented on what it takes to do in a psychiatric evaluation to establish a diagnosis. I'm almost certain that's what you said. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you didn't say that, but I'm sure you did. And therefore, what I'm saying is neither IPV nor substance usage nor narcissistic personality traits a psychiatric diagnosis. And then I bet if we heard was going to have a psychiatrist, this would be the guy. <laughs> I acted on FD under the rubric of expert witness testimony. So if you, sir, would like to perceive that expert witnesses are unethical based on that, I am not going to sit here and disagree with you and waste everyone time. I think it's fairly obvious. But thank you. I'll go ahead. These oh, are your you. words. I'm just saying <laughs> that you're interpreting. Oh. Okay. Um, he knows I don't recall. Let's start with the easy guy. question. I don't recall ever it's seeing anything easy. quite like this in my life. You're going to have to just answer the questions. Okay. okay. Sorry about that. I haven't yeah. been getting into it. You, you need to just answer the questions. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you are not rendering any diagnosis whatsoever of Mr. Depp today or ever. Uh, ooh, <laughs> uh, God, uh, uh, Artie. No, I probably would say to you that certainly I would not say narcissistic personality or I would say traits. Certainly from what I have read, intimate partner violence, not a diagnosis. So the answer is no to that. Uh, narcissistic personality traits is not a diagnosis. The answer is no. But if you want to tell me that substance use disorder is a psychiatric diagnosis, the answer is yes. And I but that wasn't an issue, was it? Whether Mr. Uh, Mr. Depp used substances. I mean, you said you've gone through the record. That that wasn't really an issue at this trial. He's said it from day one. Oh, so you're saying he's already admitted to the diagnosis. He's so, already admitted to the use of the substances. Oh, well, again, there's a difference between admitting to substance use and substance use disorder. Let's go back to uh, what you just said about narcissistic personality trait yes narcissistic personality disorder is a dsm-5 diagnosis correct correct Diagnos diagnostic personality and you haven't testified that mr depp has um narcissistic personality disorder have I would certainly, if I didn't, I'm certainly thinking that, but at least I'm going to say he has traits, which are characteristics of provisional diagnosis of, it's a provisional diagnosis of probably narcissistic personality disorder. But yeah, I mean, I do believe that. 
Well, like when you say provisional <laughs> diagnosis, you know the DSM-5 requires, in order to find that diagnosis, five of the nine factors. Mm -hmm. And you haven't done that analysis. You've never made that diagnosis. You've just identified certain factors. That are criteria for the diagnosis. Right. But you need five of nine to get to the diagnosis. You've, you've already told us that you didn't make a diagnosis. You're just ide identifying traits, correct? I'm identifying traits that are consistent with the diagnosis, yes. Right. And you, you, did you testify in deposition that the existence of traits, as opposed to the disorder, doesn't have a correlation with IPV? Uh, I, if I said traits do not have a correlation with the, if that's what I said, and I don't remember saying that, but that wouldn't be a correct thing. Narcissism has a correlation with the diagnosis. Yes, that part's true. All right, how far are we going to back this up? Because there's a diagnosis <laughs> of narcissistic personality disorder, mm -hmm. right? Yes, sir. And, and that one is tied, has some correlation with IPV, right? Narcissism has correlation with IP. Again, you, sir, I'm, you're not allowed me to answer. Breathing oxygen has a correlation with IPV. I mean, hairs between the traits that are consistent with, which all I'm commenting on is behaviors and traits that are consistent with the diagnosis. And Mr. Depp, narcissism absolutely has uh, risk factors associated with IPV. Let's go back again, and, and maybe we can <laughs> we can focus on the question I ask you, and you can get an answer that's addressed to that question. Mm -hmm. Narcissistic personality disorder is a risk factor for IPV, yes or no? Yes. And you previously testified there, that there is no literature at which you are currently aware that the mere presence of narcissistic traits is a risk factor for IPV. Am I answering the question? Yes. That's incorrect. Cluster, you didn't testify to that. A cluster, cluster B traits which narcissistic personality disorder is part of, is a huge risk factor for intimate partner violence, Excellent. which include, <clears throat> cluster B traits include narcissistic personality disorder, antisocial personality disorder, amongst others. So the answer to the question is- What about histrionic? Every, histrionic. Every what about borderline? Every resource on intimate partner violence will support, will support that cluster B traits, where narcissistic personality falls under, is a risk factor for intimate partner violence. Any single trait under is a risk factor for IPV. I, again, I will repeat, cluster B traits. I didn't say any trait, I said cluster. No, oh, you let, said me be, let, let me be more precise then. Okay. Any narcissistic trait in and of itself is a risk factor for IPV. But you are miscategorizing what I said. No. What I I'm said, I'm pretty sure I said cluster. If you look at all the intimate partner violence literature, and I would behoove you to do so, you will oh, see of course. cluster B traits. Speci I didn't say narcissistic per se. Cluster B traits. This is great. Where narcissistic personality disorder is part of are risk factors for intimate partner violence part and parcel uniformly true and i'm not sure I, the thing i don't understand is i'm not sure why we're arguing psychiatry because i'm telling you what it well, is dr siegel you just need to answer the question okay <laughs> twice so you want to talk about uh cluster b so let's do that for a minute uh oh <laughs> here we go personality <laughs> disorder is a risk fa factor for ipv as part of cluster b trace yes Histrionic personality disorder. Here we go. Factor for IPV. Less so. It looks like they brought less. in extra bailiffs in the less. back of the courtroom. It's, it's a risk factor, but less. <laughs> less so. Significantly less so. All right. So which traits under narcissistic... Oh, and bef before I move on there, there's only been one diagnosis in court of personality disorders, correct? I'm not in so who you're referring to.
Are you referring to Mr. Depp? Ms. Her who I'm not sure what you're talking about. Well, Do now I would answer. Do you understand that there was a medical examination done of Ms. Hurt? Yes, I did. Do you understand that the testimony was ultimately that Ms. Hurd suffers from two personality disorders. Okay, so I'm, I'm just being specific. I just wanted to know if you're talking about Ms. Hurd or Mr. Depp. So that was just, that's all I was asking you. Oh, but I, no. Yes, you, no. Can, can continue. You? Which yep, was his only well one diagnosis of, Ms. Hurd was diagnosed with that. Yeah, and both of the diagnoses are in cluster B, and both of them are risk factors for IPV. But, but both those cluster B things are, I'm not, I'm not allowed to comment on the testing. So therefore, all oh, I can wait, say why is not? that what? cluster B trace, and I'll tell you what they are. And by the way, I, I, I testified this before, which was that one, I don't expect perfection from my victims. Two, <laughs> I don't absolutely oh, there are cluster B trace Ms. Hurd had. Absolutely. Mr. Had given that you've testified to it before, let's move on to a new question. That is straight out of the news articles that were you, over the weekend about imperfect cheated. victims. Yep. In your opinion today that you thought the imperfect victim. Well, why don't we why don't we move a little different? Are you a member of the American Medical Association? No. Okay, so you don't know what the ethical rule of the American Medical Association is relative to doing um, clinical diagnoses about individuals you've never talked to. So you're saying in terms of doing expert witness evaluations under that rule, mm -hmm. right? I'm just asking you, do you know the AMA's rule? Clearly not. Under doing, you say, even know the APA rule. Ruling under the rubric of not doing that with somebody you did not see. And I'm, and I'm questioning, I'm asking. So you are talking about expert witness testimony. No, I'm talking about, do you know the rule? <laughs> I'm not a member of the AMA. So I, okay, I don't great. read the rule. So okay, you move on. You don't say know no. The rule. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but you make me look stupid. <laughs> you rendered an opinion about Mr. Depp's purported cognitive impairment. Yes. Yeah. What do you use as a baseline? God, I'm just waiting for the referee to oh, start the, the fight. Processing speed? That's a great yeah, question. For, for analyzing Mr. Depp before you watched his deposition. What do you use a baseline for that? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I guess my baseline would probably be what He's I guessing. have seen him interact in public. I have seen watching him, him on movies and TV. I've seen him interact in media. I've seen him interact all, and his process speed is certainly not slow. I've seen him do commercials. His process speed was not slow. Oh, good Lord. Look, at deposition, didn't you say that what you did was compare Mr. Depp's performance in lots of pirate movies? against his deposition testimony what here. I What I said was I've seen Mr. Depp do apology ads. I remember he did apology ad with Bad Dog with no delay in process speed. I've seen him interact with the media regarding to that. I saw no delay in processing speed. All I'm saying Let me ask you about pirates, though. You compared pirates to the, tech, uh, to, to the depositions given then in this I, case. Then I apologize for what I said. And I apologize. the comparison right now, just a second ago. Just a second. Johnny. I, may, I may have said that I misspoke. I apologize. I misspoke. Okay. Because you know, you Camille can't compare <laughs> pirates to sworn testimony, right? Yes. Okay. Oh my God. Good. But you can. But as an aside, you can judge someone's processing speed. At no, you time. can't. Like, I'm judging no. yours right now. You're judging mine. We all judge I mean, process. Scripted, memorized baseline. statements of what we know about each other. I would say your process speed right now. I have never judged slow. anyone's now process speed. We, we judge process speed. I'm just saying to you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, but no, any of Mr. Depp's other portrayals. He should reveal you as a learning that disability. That and your and analysis processing speed processing is slow. Speed. Only I've <laughs> seen him interact on interviews, and that was it. Right. When he wasn't in movies. What, right. But Willy Wonka doesn't matter to you. <laughs> <laughs> you see him in that movie, Only Chocolate Factory? Did you look at that one when you were comparing his processing speed? <laughs> <laughs> what the? Look at these lip what the movements. Fuck is he what the fuck is he doing with his lips movements? Can I a question here? There yes, no you have to answer the that. question. Yes, sir. No, you'll be happy. No, I didn't see Willy Wonka. As a, as I didn't see Twenty One Jump Street when it happened. Whatever it was, but no, I did not. All right. Holy.
Yeah. You you made a, a very kind admission, I think, early on in your deposition, that you're not claiming to be a better actor than Mr. Depp. <laughs> That's correct, isn't it? 100%. All right. Is there a mercy rule in cross-examination? You know that actors actually rehearse for their parts and work on the language, diction, timing of their dialogue as part of that rehearsal? If you say that, I'm not an actor, so I don't know what goes on. I can't tell you. I have no idea what goes on in acting. Okay, but you, you don't know enough about that. Actors, actors memorize scripts. Actors rehearse? Sir, I am not an expert in acting. I have oh no idea what an actor does. Okay. Oh my gosh. See the smiles in the gallery? People are trying to hold in the laughter. Look at Johnny. Yeah. All right, whatever, man. Sure, Camille's like, that. I don't know what the fuck this guy's doing. During your deposition, what were the <laughs> circumstances under which you decided to call Mr. Depp an idiot? Is <laughs> <laughs> what I call Mr. Depp an idiot? Yeah, you called Mr. Depp an idiot in your deposition. Why oh, I think. Oh, oh, okay, so I think it was in the context. I think it was in the. I should, probably should read the context <clears throat> because I think the context was. You tell I'm us. Trying to think back, and I'm trying to think back. Okay. <laughs> And what I thought it was related to was if you're coming to some deposition, okay? And again, I'm thinking back. So Of all I, the experts in the I, world. <laughs> I don't. So I'm thinking back where we're just coming the best in. best to hurt you could come up with. Europe for so a deposition, a uh, video deposition that he gave, and he took an overnight. The night I noticed before. the level on that Gatorade bottle is dropping I a lot faster on Cross than you on the <laughs> He's about to add to it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. To a, a trial that you're involved with, I have to think you'd be an idiot to come in the night before. All right. So I didn't call Mr. Depp an idiot. I certainly called that planning an idiot. I didn't call him an idiot. So the words, so I mean he's an idiot, are you <laughs> well, I'm, Again, if I said it in that kind if you just read one line, one snippet, I'm sure it was in the context. I just said. But again, you have it in front of you. I don't. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is. Uh, Idiot, a professional opinion. I wasn't. Was <laughs> yeah. it a psychiatric opinion? And that follows the the Goldwater rule. What? No. How does it follow the? Oh, you just said that. You're not rendering a professional opinion. I just said idiot. That's not a. No, so idiot is not a professional opinion. Mm -hmm. Is it your? Oh my god. Practice to describe people as idiots. My practice to describe people in my practice. No, I don't try people clinical my clinical cases as idiots or patients as idiots or victims as idiots. No, sir. <laughs> but you sat for a deposition in this case and, and described I'm starting to feel bad opinion, for this right? guy. Uh, you gave me nine hours of deposition. Oh, and if no. I said the word idiot, it was an idiot in planning. It wasn't making him an idiot. I don't know Mr. Depp's IQ. I don't know his overall functioning. So therefore, if I said it, it was an idiot in planning, which is what I meant to come across as. All right. So you did say you don't know his overall functioning, but you made some testimony today as to some yep. evaluations you made relative oh, God, to this his guy's functioning. Digging himself you straight into lava. Me that it's <laughs> probably a good idea to think about the questions that are asked you in a court proceeding before answering. Am I allowed to answer that question? Yes. Okay. So. What I meant by function, what I said by function, I believe that his agent reported how late he was showing up to every movie while the cast is waiting for him. I believe that would be an impairment. If I showed up late for that, I would not be here right now. I would not have a job. Okay. Oh, that's not I true. Doctors are late constantly. In terms of uh, balking out of treatment for substance rehab that his doctor is prescribing for him. So if you're asking me if that's an impairment of functioning, I would say I'm very much substantiated in that. I I'm trying to understand how you got to this notion of cognitive decline. And I, I thought it was based at least in part on, on the manner in which he testified. On the, I'm sorry, what? On the manner in which he testified. On the manner, I'm sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm not being difficult. I can't hear, I'm sorry, on what? But I was asking you about the cognitive decline. Yes. Escorting someone out yes. of the courtroom? It's my understanding that at least a portion of that the laughing probably that man. you mm. rendered <laughs> was that you derived some evidence of cognitive decline from the way Mr. Depp testified. Yes. Okay. And that's what I said, yes. Right. 
and so all I'm asking you is, you don't you think it's a good idea when you're in the middle of a court proceeding to answer questions carefully? Again, professionally, we diagnose patients with a neurocognitive disorder by gross evaluation. Just answer all the, the question time with cognitive. On the thought that again, age normal controls. I'm just saying, age <clears throat> normative controls does not put a 58 year old gentleman at that processing. That's all I'm saying. That's right. All I said. And you derive. Do you agree this that you should have processed a little longer on these once answers? Talking to the man. Me, me, me directly talking to him because I heard because we know how I derived it. So you're talking about me directly talking to him? Yeah, you never talked. No, to him. I never. No, I've never talked to him. Right. And th this exam you gave. Well, you did talk about Miss uh, uh, Doctor Blaustein, right? Yes, sir. And you understand that the entirety of Doctor Blaustein's uh, medical records are twelve pages of handwritten notes. <clears throat> the important part was what I said. For me, as an example of <laughs> cognition, which I'm trying to prove, which is what you asked me, the important part was what I said. Do you have and that was personality disorder? Irrefutable. <laughs> the important part is that he give he gave the mini mental status exam? Yes, sir. All right. That's Let's talk cognitive. about the mini mental status exam. <laughs> Scored on a 30 point scale, right? Yes. All right. And it's it's an exam that basically is most often used for what Alzheimer's dementia, those kind of testing. It, it's an exam that tests cognition in all psychiatric illnesses, not just Alzheimer's. It was made for dementia for Alzheimer's, but is the standard has been the standard for testing cognition in all psychiatric illness, substance use disorders included. Okay. Now, there is an element of that exam that requires drawing, correct? Yes. So you don't know what drawing Mr. Depp did or whether the drawing should have been fully scored. I, I wasn't questioning his visual spatial perceptual skills, which is what that does. Right. And you don't know what score Mr. Depp received on the exam. I was very specific. I know three words, not remembering at five minutes. That's all I said. Three words, not remembering five minutes. And he, he remembered one of them, right? From what I'm saying, he didn't remember any of them. All right. Memory on the exam. Out of the 30 points, what's it worth? Three. Th three, right? Memory is three out of the 30. Yeah. Memory is three. Okay. But again, the memory section in and of itself tests memory. That's the only question that tests memory, only section that actually tests memory. So the memory section tests memory. It's the only section you testified about. And for all you know, that we're, with respect to the exam that you're relying on, Mr. Depp scored 27 out of 30. And that would be telling, though, cognitively, if you scored 27 out of 30 and you missed three points on memory. That would be very telling. You don't know if Mr. Depp had been up all night the night before. Again, you wouldn't expect to not recall any words at three minutes unless there's a cognitive issue. You don't know if Mr. Depp was high. And again, oh, now that's, again, now that could affect memory, but I'm not, oh. I'm not refuting that. I'm not refuting that at all. I, he could have been high, he could have been drunk, he could have been using cocaine, and that would absolutely affect his memory, which right. is what I said. Yes, you're right. So ultimately, you have no idea what state Mr. Depp was in at the at the time he took the exam that you're relying on? Short of what you just said about drugs and alcohol, okay, there shouldn't be a reason why a 58 year old also with strokes and other neurocognitive. Short of that, Short in of someone that, with an admitted abuse really problem, why someone at that age shouldn't come up with at least one. But. But an answer. Wait, but, but wait a minute. You, you, you started that question with short of drugs and alcohol. <laughs> 45 minutes talking about <clears throat> drugs and alcohol. <laughs> Isn't that right? No, I'm agree. What I, I thought I agreed with you. I think I agreed. I said that drugs and alcohol can absolutely affect cognition. I'm not sure. I, yeah, I agree, but I'm not sure if that's a problem. I agree with you on that. All right. So you don't know one way or the other 
how he scored on the exam. You don't know whether he was at the time on drugs and alcohol, but you're going to rely on it in your testimony to say that he's cognitively impaired. Which is what we do in clinical medicine, sir. Okay. You that you don't know the when it was administered, you don't know the score of of the test, and you don't know the <clears throat> of the person being tested, but you're gonna rely on it anyway. Again, if we had to know every test when people get the mini mental state exam, we have no idea clinically if they are high, wasted, stone. Stroke, we have no idea. So if you're going to say that, that means everybody needs a drug test before they do a mini mental study, and that's not the standard of care. And I think you know that. So let's talk a little he has bit more about you have more this knives word we kept using in the sheath. Correlation. You know the word, right? <laughs> yes. Correlation and causation. Like Hollywood gun that never runs out of bullets. Correlation? No, they're not the same. No, how are they different? Correlation is consistent with causation is direct link. Can you say that again? You were so fast I didn't hear it. I'm sorry about that. Correlation is a risk for something happening. Causation is a direct link. Right. So just because something's correlated doesn't mean it's going to happen. 100%. Right. Right. <clears throat> Lung cancer, for instance. Smoking is very highly correlated with lung cancer, right? Yeah, and certainly, and there's certainly a link right. to lung cancer and smoking. Right, but but not all smokers get lung cancer. Not, no, not all smokers do. No one, like I said, no one fits the curve perfectly. Right, and you made repeated testimony to, and to, to <clears throat> all of us. All of us do this. All of us do that. Mm -hmm. Your, your suggestion, to all of us, is you're just looking at <clears throat> as a sample and not at any particular individual, correct? What I'm looking at is that I am not talking about an individual, how they can or cannot be resistant. What I'm saying is invariably, when you substances, this is going to happen. Now, is there a 0.05% chance that someone who does... Absolutely, there is. But is that medical degree of certainty? Absolutely not. A 0.05% chance of what, sir? I'm, I, of I, developing, <laughs> eventually developing symptoms. If you're using excessively, eventually you're going to develop symptoms. Right. But risk factors tell us nothing about any one particular individual, do they, sir? No, the, no again, risk factors tell us nothing except that if they have it, they're at a higher likelihood of developing it. That's right. what tells us. And, and, but you did uh, if they a whole have it, they're likely risk, to risk factors it. relative to IPV. Yes, right. And none of those risk fa factors tell us anything specifically about an individual. Other, right? Other than they're at higher risk, right? Right. Um, so someone could have every single risk factor for IPV and never commit IPV, right? It would be, again, if you're going to say a medical degree of probability, the answer is they will. But if you're saying me uniformly, the answer is no. Right. IPV the only answer is no. Substance abuse. Oh, sure. Someone can abuse substances without ever perpetrating IPV. Again, absolutely. But, again, you are saying different than what I said. You're not saying anything. I did not say abusing substance. I said substance use disorder. You are, oh. those are two different things because there are surely people who use substances that do not engage in any violence, do not become psychotic. There Nothing. we go. So and that's absolutely. equally true of people who have substance abuse disorder. There are certainly people who have substance abuse disorder who don't commit IPV, correct? They are saying people who have substance use disorders so the majority of them, over 50% do. So over 50% do. So that's medical. So, now, so my, the now answer is over 50%. So there's 49%. Yes. As you said, not right. everyone who smokes gets lung cancer. So there are significant numbers of people. You you said it was over 50. So, so 
you'd say 40% of the people who have substance abuse disorder don't commit IPV. And those are the ones that do not have IPV risk factors, though, right? So we're talking about people. Wait, wait a minute. Who don't. Isn't substance abuse disorder and right. IPV risk factors? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. These are other people that have don't have other risk factors, right? Other risk factors. God, somebody again, throw in the white you're towel. Talking about this people is... in general, you don't know anything about any particular individual as to whether anybody's going to commit IPV. If statistics follow through, all we can That's say is question. more than 50%, 70% will. If you combine more risk factors you have, the more likely you're going to develop the illness. If you smoke cigarettes once, that might not correlate to lung cancer. If you smoke it chronically, that might. Right. So that's so all we're I'm talking about individuals here. You either have lung cancer or you don't, right? If you're smoking. Right. Right. You either commit IPV or you didn't. Oh, I mean, yeah, you either did or you didn't. Yes. Right. So you took some issue with me because I was asking about substance abuse generally. And you wanted me to talk about the, the disorder. I'm. I asked you earlier about narcissistic personality disorder, mm -hmm. and you, you haven't made that diagnosis. You've just talked about the traits, right? Yes. And anybody, somebody can have these narcissistic personality traits and substance abuse disorder and never commit IPV, right? So along that line, right. about about 80 90 percent of pay people who commit ipv have so, a personality disorder what do you so the answer is on? less than about 10 percent obviously do not what study is that from there are more close links with ipv for borderline personality disorder than narcissistic personality disorder correct sir um not going to agree with that. No, I'm not saying there are more links. I would say to you, there are absolute. If you're asking me, there are links. The answer is absolutely. If you're saying to me more, I can show studies. Say yes, show studies. Say that that has not been absolutely definitively correlated. No, no, absolutely not. Dead air. RX Joe says, when did Lurch go to med school? MDMA. <laughs> Let's talk MDMA. What is it? Uh, ecstasy. Yeah. And what's the normal dosage of ecstasy for for people who use ecstasy? Again, I couldn't tell you the quote unquote normal dose because honestly speaking, no one, no one knows what they're getting when they're using it, right? It's not regulated, so. But... The effects of ecstasy enhance sense of well-being? At low doses, the answer is yes. I'm going to... Wait, he doesn't know what a senior dose is. I doesn't know what a low dose is. Tolerance, you develop the sympathomimetic effects, which are not so enhanced well-being. Increased extroversion, that's, that's the symptom. Again, at low dose, you are 100% right. At low amounts, you are 100% right. It is an attactogen. We feel closer to people. That's what people who use it say. They feel close to people, warmth to people, uh, 100%. But with continual use and higher doses, it could be fatal. Right. So that's not, that's not well-being. I don't know if I'd call that well-being. So continued use at higher doses, MDMA can be fatal, correct? Correct. What if you took 8 to 10 tablets of MDM MDMA? If, what if you took and takes that again, you don't know what it's, it's very hard to say that you don't know what it's, uh, 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 uh what's the uh, word I'm looking for? Uh, contaminated with. You okay. You, you can't just say, Hey, let me just take eight to 10 pure ecstasy and see what happens. Yeah. That's, that's not going to happen. So what I would say to you again, because substances of abuse are unpredictable, they are not regulated. No one knows what they're going to. No one apps has any idea. Whether you have it's going some to cause this empathic and tactogen effect at very low doses, or is it going to cause the sympathomimetic, I'm sorry, increase um, uh, 
a consists like a stimulant, like cocaine, something we talked about like that. No one knows what's going to happen. It's not regulated. And no one knows if you're using with other substances either, like other stimulants. Or if you mix it with alcohol. Or if you mix it with alcohol. No but, one knows if it's going to be potentially worse. Right. But if this is a potentially lethal combination. Eight to ten MDMA this, tablets okay. and this alcohol. Is a, this is a potentially toxic combination. Right. Can it kill you? Yeah, I mean, it is a potentially toxic combination. That's true. Ever heard of someone cutting off their own finger on MDMA? <laughs> Have I ever heard of it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I can only give you one I example. I hadn't seen that one before. Okay. I have, I, so, Seroquel. He was going to try and say Johnny Depp. That one <clears throat> puts you to sleep, right? Uh, if you want to phrase a barbiturate putting you to sleep, then the answer is yes. Yeah, you heard Mr. Uh, Mr. Depp talking about sometimes being on the nod, right? A and again, I think I, expl I, think I explained Seroquel very well. I think I, think I did. I think I Good. did. I'm going to ask him a few more questions. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. You kept making references to street value. Why were you doing that? <laughs> because that's why people with substance use disorder use quetiapine and Seroquel. That's why people who use quetiapine and or slash Seroquel can get has it sells on the street because it's so barbiturate like in effect. Right, but you said that Mr. Depp had a prescription. Huh? There are many substance use disorder patients who have prescriptions you for diagnose Adderall and disorder. quetiapine from their doctor, and that doesn't mean they're not getting high out of it. That doesn't take much. Doctors like to believe what patients have to say. They're not going to go in there being uh, expert witness testimony. All I'm telling you is that in people who have substance disorder, it is not uncommon. And the thought was initially that because quetiapine was not addicting, that it's safe to give in people with substance use disorders. When in fact, we absolutely know it has street values. Absolutely know that for a fact. Right, but my point about this is you made a, a, a bunch of testimony about street value, but you knew at the time you made the testimony that Mr. Depp, in fact, had a prescription. He also had a prescription for oxycodone and roxycodone. Is that, does that count? Because that's also... You're not answering the question, bro. It's just because you have a prescription doesn't I, I mean that... I think Mr. Doesn't, Depp would agree with you it wasn't a good thing. Just because <laughs> it doesn't mean you can't abuse it. No, I'm not suggesting you could, you're abusing it. I'm, I'm just wondering why your testimony was in any way tied to street value when every single drug you referenced, Mr. Depp had legally. Again, you can have prescription substance abuse, and we know that, correct? But what does that have to do with the street value? We can have prescription substance use disorders, and that's not uncommon if you look at the opiate epidemic that we're living in right now. We can have that. That's not an uncommon thing. What's it have to do with this case? But uncommon. Nothing. So, Seroquel, I think you described as a sleeping agent when used off label. When I saw what? Sleeping agent, Seroquel, when used off label. When used off label, it's used. It can be used sleeping agent. Yes. Right. So, Mr. Depp's use of Seroquel could account for some of the photos we saw in this pic in in this trial. Where he's asleep in a chair. Again, what I would say to you is that if you have a substance use disorder, you are using it to be knocked out. Yes, I agree. And I'm, but I'm not sure at the end of the day if you have vomitus over you either, because I've never seen Cerebral do that. So when he was passed out in the chair, he also had vomitus over him. I've never seen Cerebral do that ever. What a, he didn't have vomit on him. No, he was passed out nobody saw vomit. There's no vomit. No. Drugs you testified oh, about. Ice, ice cream. That one's. Yeah. Also uh, prescribed, right? Yes, it is. She was writing a note that says it was yep. ice cream. <laughs> what's it used for? And yeah. what's its indication? Or what's its yeah, use? What's its indication? And I mean, it's indication about is it? for seizures. It may have one pain indication. Again, I'm not a neurologist, so I can't tell you exactly if it does. But but it's chronically used off label for pain. It's used off label for anxiety. You're right. And what's its effect? That's another That's another one that'll put you to sleep, right? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, sure, 100%. Right. Yeah, sure. And you made reference to a picture. Here we go. Yeah. There's no. Around, the, around that picture that Mr. Depp fell asleep with ice cream in his hand. 
That's not vomitous, right? I, I was told it was vomitous. Oh, oh shit. Oh, my Uh-oh. God. Who told um, you that? You talked about the no, fact keep that going. Mr. Depp oh. uh, indicates that from time to time he uses an earpiece. God oh, damn it. I was you yeah, were I mean, told. I, I, I read that, yeah. Why would you let that go? Um, did you read the testimony of Mr. Wyatt? Who told you what was being pumped into that earpiece? Yeah, I mean, if I if I remember right, I mean, it was I think it was lines, right? No, no, it was music. Music. It was music, not his line. Yeah. Oh, oh so oh if, shit! If Mr. Depp was listening to music rather than being fed his lines, that so it's not no, so it's 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 the it was premises are correct and the premises are not correct. He was never fed his lines through the earpiece, which I know he was. How do you know? Right. How do you know? Come on. Come that on. may have been that example. Mr. White may have said that it was music. I guess the question is: He's having the music. See him smiling during the during the actual talking of your lines. Is that what you're saying to me? Well, you know, if if you can do two things at once, that's a pretty high cognitive function. Dividing attention is something humans have a lot of trouble in. So, for instance, we have trouble driving and putting on the, you know, using our uh, cell phones and direct. So, we do? And humans actually are not very good at. Maybe I'll, for I'll you. I'll put that out there. But Mr. In, in general, not but, just Mr. That's Depp. not the Mr. fucking Mr. question. Mr. Depp is pretty good at acting. You, 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 you acknowledge that early on. Absolutely. Well, better than me, so I know that. Because you don't act. In fact, you don't know about acting. <laughs> You're and right. No, no, doesn't I even do. know actors rehearse. You don't know how prevalent the use of earpieces are in acting. Again, I, do, I I know nothing about acting. Oh, my God. Irrespective of the fact you know nothing about acting, you've testified that Mr. Depp... Elaine is going to walk up and shoot this guy in the back of the head. Oh, a cognitive deficit? <laughs> so if I was giving a lecture and I was fed my wrong... Can my entire testimony please deficit. be stricken? And, oh, me go and maybe I'm wrong. Like I said, maybe I could be wrong. Maybe Hollywood stars get... Maybe you're wrong in your professional them, opinion. Pieces ...all the time, and I, I don't know. I, I, that could be said. It sounded to me to be unusual if you're doing a movie and you don't know the lines. But sounded like you said, I'm just judging into what I do with lectures, and I, that would never happen. If you gave lectures, you wouldn't use an earpiece, but you, you're not going to tell anybody how to act. Man, I've never seen a pirate with an earpiece before. So, <laughs> so what was the question? I, I said, if you gave <laughs> lectures, you wouldn't use an earpiece, but you're not telling anybody how to act. Right. I would not use an earpiece during lectures. Right. But I again, I don't know what the standard for care of how, standard as Hollywood is for that. I have no idea. Sir, do you know Jack? Your use testimony <laughs> about the use of an earpiece. No, I don't know Jack. Maybe you were wrong. You're comfortable with the fact that you may have made a mistake there. No, because I think in the basis of what I've read about it, I'm comfortable that. I, I don't believe that. I'm oh, the rest of this theater right. But not one whit of evidence that ever, this ever happened I, here. I guess what I said, I just said, I find it hard to believe. I didn't say it. Ha- I said, I find it hard to believe. That's all I said. Oh, yeah, in but, the absence of evidence. What I found hard to believe, sir, was that every every line of the script was, was pumped through an earpiece. Where did you ever get the idea that ever that occurred? That's what I have been. That's what I read, and the uh, court review, the court evidence. That's where I got it from. Right? It's not and, in um, the evidence. It's not in evidence. Yeah. It's not in evidence. You know where, whether Marlon Brando used an earpiece? Whether isn't he dead? <laughs> yeah. So the answer is no. He does not use one now. He said no. dead. I, I used the past tense. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, I, again, I know nothing. I will concede to you. I know nothing about acting. I will concede to you 100. Oh. If that is the standard and people are done that acting, then I apologize and that was wrong on my part. If that's the standard, I'm wrong. I don't know. <clears throat> okay, let's go with that. No further. Questions. Amber Heard's about to throw a vodka bottle at this guy. A, l- a bit. You may want to take. All right, let's go ahead and break for lunch, oh, then, ladies my and gentlemen. Again, do not. Jesus, that question. was a murdering. Your testimony with anybody, okay? And he's they're gonna not done. He, he's going to off himself in the parking lot. I mean, it was a snuff film. Chug, 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 chug. There we go. (laughs) Speaking of vodka. Chug, 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 chug. Interested to hear uh, what Joe says about what Tyler would take of this. I mean. 
<laughs> I'm going to see a little red laser sight dot on his, on his back. 155. Oh, wait, lunch. I was like, 155. Lunch, yeah, it's lunchtime. My brain broke. That was painful uh, to watch. I felt I feel genuinely sorry for this schmuck. Dude, I don't. No, that, no that I don't. Not at all. No, he's a he douche. I mean, I would not feel bad for this guy at all. Well, I mean, I mean, in the way that I see somebody just like wailing on like a dog with a stick repeatedly for an hour. <laughs> oh my I mean, gosh! I mean, that, that was, was brutal. That's I he's the bottom of this be... emblem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh love it yeah someone should photoshop uh the the cross examiner's head <laughs> and then there, on top then, of dr the, nosferatu yeah the That's doctor the down there oh my gosh that was devastating so i thought it was going to be bad because there were just some indications <laughs> that it was going to be pretty bad based on his direct but uh, that was i mean that was one of the most devastating cross examines of the case and there have been some doozies <laughs> I'm primarily transactional and shipping accident recreation thing for the people. It's more trial. Has there, have you ever personally witnessed an expert testimony go this bad? Yeah. Yeah, I have. I mean, sometimes wow. they just go bad, but I mean, you think with the money at stake here, they would have, they would have <laughs> been able to come up with somebody who even if, it, you know, on the merits, it was just as bad presented better. I mean, this guy presents like right. a complete douche. But that's yeah. been, but that's also been the consistent uh, expert uh, standard for Amber Heard's side. I mean, they had him, Dr. Karen, Dr. Handy. I mean, none of these people are are eminently likable. These are all really dislikable people, and they're so standoffish. You need to your wit, your expert should be able to sit there and endure like an attack on their reputation because it's the other party's job to go ahead and say, yeah, but you're not an expert on this, and then you can calmly say, well, you know. Uh, people often confuse these things, but in our field, these things are overlapping and correlated. And so one leads into the other. And I certainly have tons of experience dealing with and treating domestic violence victims instead of getting butt hurt about someone dissing your CV and then coming off like a jackass for the entirety of his testimony. He was so combative and it's, it's like, what combative, were you doing? Offensive. I mean, it's just terrible. Listen, I do, a, I do a lot of expert consulting. And, you know, I just call the shots as I see them. And if there's stuff I don't know, I just say I don't know. If there's limits to my opinion, I just share what the limits to my opinion are. And if that's not 100% favorable to the client who's paying me, that's too bad. That's just the way it is. Maybe they brought this guy in to bolster Dr. Hughes. <laughs> well, look, well, but, I mean, but, I know but, you guys but, hated this chick, but this guy's way worse. Or just to put well, him to burn hours on cross-examination. <laughs> He, w he was testifying on everything, though. He was an expert in everything, uh, you know, every single area of medicine, psychology, and shit, the law. That was the most, the stunning thing to me is he's literally sitting there giving this appellate argument on what expert testimony should and should not be. That's just mind-blowing. I've never heard somebody try to do that, a, a medical expert, or on the stand. It's, it's ridiculous. I love that he just, he just destroyed him by reading the rule. That's all he did. He just read the rule from the APA. He said, do you find that your testimony under this rule is unethical? Well, I, I, I mean, if, if that's the, if that's how you're going to take it, but yes, the yes, it was, it was unethical. <laughs> <laughs> like it was, if that's what you're saying, my ethical rules are of the professional organization I'm a member of. Uh, I guess I'll have to take your word for it. Cause I don't read that stuff. <laughs> I mean, you're an expert witness. The guy looked like a fool. Um, He's Holy bringing his own shit. SV charges against that lawyer for that savage rogering he just got. I mean, that was. Ooh. So poor out of not bang a bow, more of the frog. Spirits blow as the one suit get unemployed. So poor out of class for the team post on Twitter. As we hear lost.